Hello everyone and welcome back to Neuroscience Methods 101. Today we are going to discuss transcranial focused ultrasound stimulation. Since it is relatively new, this technique goes by different abbreviations, but the most common ones are TFUS and TUS. Most people will have heard about ultrasound sonographs that are used for looking inside the body. For example, when looking at a developing baby in a mother's womb. But ultrasound waves can also be used in much different ways. By focusing ultrasound waves to a single point and using it at a high intensity, tumors can be removed. But how is that possible? Well, by creating a focal point, a lot of energy is created in a single spot. If this intensity is high enough, malignant cells can be destroyed. But what happens when we use this focused ultrasound wave at lower intensities? Is it possible to induce some energy to brain cells in a non-invasive and safe way without causing damage? That is exactly what transcranial focused ultrasound stimulation aims to do. Now, non-invasive brain stimulation is nothing new. And on this channel we talked about transcranial magnetic stimulation, transcranial direct current stimulation and transcranial alternating current stimulation. So, if we already have methods that use magnetic and electric fields to stimulate the brain, why do we need another one? Well, other brain stimulation techniques, like TMS and TDCS, have one thing in common, namely one major disadvantage. They can only target superficial brain areas directly. This means that deeper brain areas can only be stimulated indirectly at best. This disadvantage is not shared by TIFUS because the ultrasound waves can be focused to a specific point. As an analogy, let's look at a magnifying glass. Because of the curvature of the lens, incoming light will be focused to a specific spot. If the curvature is strong, then the focus point will be close by. But if the curvature is not so strong, the focus point will be far away. The same principle holds for TIFUS, except that it does not work with light, but with ultrasound waves. So, what exactly happens at the TIFUS focus point? Because this technique is still in its infancy, a lot of the neurophysiological effects is still unknown. So maybe this video needs to be redone in a few years. But for now, let's look at the leading hypothesis. When neurons in the brain communicate, for example by sending action potentials, ion channels are opened and closed to control the voltages in the cell. The ultrasound waves of TIFUS are thought to create pressure on the cell membranes and consequently also on the ion channels. Thus, by this added pressure it may become slightly easier or slightly harder for an ion channel to open. Thereby the chance of generating an action potential is modulated. Or to state it more simply, by inducing an ultrasound wave it changes how well the neurons can do their job. Various animal and human studies have been done and are ongoing to understand the effects of TIFUS and they have found neuromodulatory effects. But there is still a lot of research needed. Remember, since focused ultrasounds are also used for the removal of tumors, non-invasive application of TIFUS needs to be at a lower intensity for it to be safe. So a lot of research has focused on the safety of TIFUS. With this safety in mind, a conservative approach has been used. But of course, if stimulation intensity is too low, there won't be any effects at all. Thus, more research is needed to find what the best stimulation parameters for different brain regions are. Now, that's it. We hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something new. If you did, let us know by liking this video and leaving a comment. And we hope to see you the next time.